All right, guys, we're back with another super informative video from yours truly. What I want to talk about today is golden ratio typography, but more specifically, the geometric characteristics of fonts and how those factor into golden ratio type typography. And, uh, you know, beyond that, I'm, I'm going to show you how I measure the geometric characteristics of fonts so I can use those values in these tuning equations uh, to generate perfect typography. So to set the stage for that, let's actually look at this first and get a feel for the problem. So the problem is this. When we have text in a, a column here, you know, presented however text is normally presented on the internet, what we need to do to make it look perfect, to look as good as possible, is to, ter to determine the line height of the text in our paragraphs. Uh, this basically this determines how much spacing is between each line of text, and if that if that value is correct, if it's proportional, uh, then it's good, the text is going to look very good. And so, the question is, how how do we determine that? Well, with golden ratio typography, uh, we use the golden ratio and apply it to the text, to the font size of the text, and then we generate a line height value for that text. But the thing about that is, if we just apply the golden ratio to any font, we could do, apply it to it, you know any particular font, and we're going to get different, slightly different looking results though because of the physical characteristics of the fonts we're using. And I'll explain. There's there's two key physical characteristics we're going to look at. The first occurs in the width dimension. It uh, it's called the character constant, and it basically determines how fat or skinny. A particular font is. This font we're looking at right here is kind of medium, it's neither too fat nor too skinny, but certain fonts like Courier New for example is very fat. Um, I can actually, I'll, I'll do this real quick just to kind of show you some fat versus some thin ones. Pull this down here, we'll check out, we'll see what a fat one looks like and a thin one. So we'll go All right, now we're looking at Courier. So Courier is a fatter font. The letters are fatter, wider than the other font we were looking at, which is the uh, Mac OS system font called San Francisco. So fatness and thinness is one characteristic that occurs in the width dimension. The other one occurs in the vertical dimension, and that is known as the X height. And specifically, the X height of a font is... It's the ratio of the height of a lowercase letter to the height of an uppercase letter. And the X height is super critical because if a font has a very large X height and we set, you know, set the line height according to the golden ratio, the actual space that we perceive to be between the lines of text is going to be smaller than it would be if the X height were, 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 were littler. And that's interesting. So, because of that, the implication of that is that we actually need to tune those line heights based on the geometric characteristics of the fonts we are using. So that, that's how we achieve absolutely perfect typography that's custom tailored to whatever environment it is deployed in. So the question is, how do we determine the character constant width, the average character width essentially, and then also the, uh, the X height of a font. These values are not published by font foundries like Typekit, Google Fonts, uh, various other boutique foundries. They don't publish this information. So we don't have, like just naturally, we can't just go on the internet and acquire this stuff and then tune our fonts perfectly. Unfortunately, in 2019, we actually still have to measure this stuff. Now, quick aside, it would be super cool if Typekit and Google Fonts and, you know, uh, companies like this started to uh, started to measure the dimensions of the fonts that they make available to the public, that would be super helpful. Because then this type of um, high-level font tuning could be applied to any project anywhere. It doesn't just have to be like a thesis thing or focus thing. It doesn't have to be strictly through my software. This could be universal, which would be great. So anyway, let's dive in here. So we are going to look at a Google font today. I'll show you how I measure this stuff. That's really the purpose of the video. I want to give you a behind-the-scenes look at the level of detail I'm going into here to achieve perfect typography. So we'll look at a new Google font called Coho, and uh, we will measure this and determine its physical characteristics. 
So we will start by going over to my handy little typography calculator tool. Uh, uh, actually, this is to determine geometric properties of text. And then we will pull it up on a page here. So we're looking at Coho when this renders. OK, there it is. And what I have here is a bunch of samples of text. I actually have three different samples at various numbers of characters. So this, these first three samples are 55 characters, then 65 characters, three samples at 65, three samples at 75, three samples at 85, and three samples at 95. And essentially what I've tried to do is take these text samples as if they were pulled straight from a novel, you know, just from books or whatever. You want to have different different sentences, different combinations of letters, natural, but I use sentences from books and stuff because they're natural. It's not like, you know, a bunch of periods together, an exclamation point, uh, weird stuff like that that would skew the results. We want natural results, so I have natural data. And what I do basically is I just, I know how many characters are in each sample, so I know that this one's 55 characters, and I can measure the width of the resulting line of text. I know the font size, I know the number of characters, and then I can measure the resulting width. And from that, I can determine what the average character width of this particular text sample is. And then I, I take it across all these different text samples at all these different sizes, and we average those to determine what the character constant is for a particular font. So we will hit this and determine what it is for Coho, and it turns out that value is 2.35. 2.35. Now it's called the character constant because no matter what size we render this particular font in, the character constant is always going to be the same. And what this value describes exactly is if we took like this capital letter I right here, or any capital, uh, any capital letter, and we laid it down on its side, we are saying how many characters on average will fit in this space created by this capital letter that's been laid down. And for this font, uh, 2.35 characters is going to be the average that's going to fit in that dimension. So really this character constant is sort of linking the vertical and hor horizontal dimensions of text. It describes, but ultimately describes how fat or skinny a font is. So that's the first thing we're going to need. The second thing is a little harder to calculate. And the second, second geometric characteristic is called the X height of the text. Now we'll scroll down here to my X height sample, which I need to turn into uh, to turn into the correct font here. Pull this up here, and we will change it to Coho. Boom. All right, let me squeeze, stretch this out a little bit. Whoop. All right, now. We have our text sample, and the height, the x height, is the ratio of the height of a lowercase letter to the height of an uppercase letter. It's commonly referred to as the x height because the x typically, it's not always the case, but the x fits within the typographical grid perfectly for a lowercase letter. So the x is a, a very good representation of how tall a lowercase letter is generally going to be. So, you see these lines here, and what I'm going to do is adjust them to measure this, this font exactly. So, first thing I'm going to do is pull this baseline, this bottom border down here to the bottom of the text. You can see it right here. And now, I'm going to pull this dark gray line down to the very top of the capital letter T. There we go. And now I'm going to pull this lighter gray one down to the, the X height. There we go. All right. Now, to determine the X height, we just need to determine the height of this to the height of this, that ratio. So uh, we can see, here. Uh, let's see here. The total height of the sample from the top to the bottom is 273 pixels. But this starts at 64, so that leaves us 209 pixels of height for our capital letter. And now we just need to figure out how tall the lowercase letter is to get our ratio. Uh, that's going to be 209 minus the result of 133 minus 64. I believe that is 69. So we're going to do 209 minus 69 divided by 209. So let's do that. 
209 minus 69 divided by 209 is 0.6699. So that's what we have for this font Coho. We have a mu value, a character constant value of 2.35. And we have an X height value of 0.6699. Now that we have those values, we can go back to golden ratio typography and tune them exactly, very precisely, to any environment where we want to deploy this text and get perfectly tuned line heights and therefore perfectly tuned spacing and dimensions for our entire layout. That's how this stuff works. But like I said, we can't make any of these calculations unless we have those values. And so that, whenever I add fonts to Thesis or to Focus or to any of my software, I perform these measurements first so that when you deploy those fonts on your site, they can all be calculated uh, and, and you know calibrated perfectly for wherever you deploy them. You can you guys can hear my daughter in the background. She doesn't just does not care that I'm making a video here. So anyway, apologies for that. Hopefully you can stay with me. So uh, the page I'm showing you here now is from my golden ratio typography calculator. It's grtcalculator.com slash math. Uh, if you want more, you know, gruesome detail of the math behind all this, this page is where you want to go. Uh, I, I discuss at length the character constant and also uh, X height tuning, which uh, I showed you how I calculate the X height. But um, this this is the level of detail we're working with, with thesis and with focus and with pretty much everything I do. But you know, you guys, I've never talked about this. I've been doing this stuff since late 2011 in my software, but I just not talked about it in this level of detail and shown you really the process I go through to uh, measure fonts and achieve perfect typography. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this little trip behind the scenes with me today. I hope that gave you a little bit of clarity on this process and how all this stuff works and how uh, painstakingly detailed it is. But anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll do another one soon. See ya.